Welcome. My name is Hans Schultz. I'm one of the owners here at Bike Friday. Congratulations on your purchase of a Project Q, the tandem that turns into a single bike. This is a video that teaches you how to assemble and to pack and to convert the bike from a single to a tandem and back again. We'll also show you how to pack it into a single suitcase and double suitcases. If you need help at any time, we're available. Our number is 1-800-777-0258. Let's get started. We're going to assemble the bike first. Insert the stem all the way into the steer tube. Be sure that it goes all the way to the bottom of its socket. Next, insert the two halves into the stem clamp. Check the cables to be sure that they're actually straight and not tangled amongst each other. Then using the LIFU multi-tool, snug down on the bolts on the bars. They don't need to be completely tight at this point because we're going to need to adjust the bars level when the bike is fully assembled. Tighten the stem clamp to the steer tube. Your bike may actually have a quick release at this point. To assemble the rest of the frame, start with the rear top tube. Notice that it has a miter at one end, is cut off at 90 degrees at the other end. Insert the miter into the top of the front of the frame. The top tube is the one with the bottle bosses on it. The lower tube, insert the 90 degree cut into the frame. Slide the tube through the removable cable guides first before inserting it into the frame. Next, add the rear end. Line the tubes up carefully. Once the tubes are lined up and started, the frame will slide together smoothly. Insert the rear wheel into the rear of the frame. If you haven't done so, let, relax the cable completely with a right shifter. Put the chain onto the smallest cog and pull up into the dropout. If you have the 3x7 rear hub, the washer that's behind the nut has two small tabs on it. Those tabs should follow the axle into the dropout as opposed to preceding it into the dropout. Once it's all the way into the dropout, snug it down by hand at this point. If you received your bike in a single suitcase, you'll need to install the cranks now. The cranks come with a one key release. Line the cranks up left and right so it's 180 degrees from each other. Tighten the one key release crank bolt with the Allen wrench provided. Turning it clockwise until the crank is pulled all the way onto the axle. If you have the new Shimano style splined cranks, it's very important that you make sure that before tightening completely that the splines are fully engaged. It's possible to damage these cranks if you're not careful about making the cranks 180 degrees from each other.
Then next we're going to add the timing chain. Notice the timing chain has two silver links on it. Those are actually timing marks. There's a corresponding mark on each chain ring that shows you where to place the chain and it allows the cranks to be timed properly. Make sure the chain is seated all the way around and then proceed to the next chain ring. The timing mark then for the other link is placed on the chain ring over the top and being careful to keep the chain from derailing, turn the chain around and it will seat and leave the cranks uh, timed with each other. Now install the drive chain. Pull the derailleur forward and set the chain on top of the chain ring. Starting with the rear cable, insert the cable housing into the cable guide by pulling the spring back. Connect the cable couplers. To determine which cable goes to which mechanism, follow the cable down. Your right shifter cable will go to the rear derailleur cable. Find those two from their separate ends and then attach them. The same goes for the front derailleur or the 3x7, whichever you might have. There's also, if you have a drag brake, the same procedure. Be sure all the cable guides are seated properly and that the housing is not hung up on the edge any place. The removable cable guide will need to be tightened down too. There's a stop on that lower tube. It's very important that the cable guide is all the way up to that stop because that's how the adjustment is provided. Notice that we're going to move it forward. It wasn't quite up against the stop. We're going to move it all the way to the stop. Pull the cable all the way tight for, to adjust the 3x7 hub. When the cable is pulled all the way tight with a shifter mechanism, insert the pull chain for the rear hub all the way in into the black coupler at the end of the derailleur cable. Give the wheel a slight spin to be sure that the cable is all the way out and the, and the pull chain has pulled all the way into its lowest range the shifter mechanism so that the hub will work. Now we'll adjust the chain tension. Notice the frame can collapse a little bit. We haven't tightened the frame all the way down and we're about to. By pushing down on the front captain's seat, it pulls the bottom of the frame out slightly and will tension the chain. The chain should have about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of movement in the middle of in the middle of the tube. Now we'll tighten down the top of the frame. Make sure that the bottom tube is aligned. Notice that there's a, a pump peg on the top of the frame. If the chain isn't completely tight, leave the front lower clamp a little bit loose and then put pressure on the captain's seat. That will pull the chain out tight. If the chain is too tight, leave it loose and pull the two sides of the chain together slightly before tightening. Now hook up the rear brake. If you have trouble, if you have a rear brake and you have trouble with a, a travel agent, the travel agents what you will find on bikes that have drop bar levers with V brakes. Notice that the nipple of the travel agent has protruded through the yoke of the brake. 
squeeze the brake to be sure that it's actuating properly. If you have trouble with the, with the travel agent, go to the end of this video and it will show you the troubleshooting portion of using the travel agent. Now hook up the front brake with the same procedure, pulling the two sides of the V-brake together. If you find it's too tight, notice that the cable, the, in this case, the cable guide is setting up on the edge of the ferrule. Make sure the cable guide is set all the way in to be sure you have full slack in the cable. Pull the two pieces together, pull the travel agent down into the yoke, and then the nipple will snap in through the yoke. If the springs are not seated, seat them now. Installing the pedals. Notice that the pedals at the ends are somewhere on the ac pedal axles towards where the wrench is attached. It will have an L and an R. The left pedals oftentimes will have a serration around the edge. Right hand pedals should be turned clockwise when tightening. Left hand pedals are installed counterclockwise when tightening. Next go through and be sure that you've installed and tightened each and every bolt. Check the handlebars to be sure that you can't turn them by putting weight on them in the front, particularly with drop bars. Disconnect the cable couplers in the middle of the bike. These are the same ones that we attached during assembly. Also detach the couplers on the front of the captain's position. Those whole center section of cables will need to be removed along with the center of the bicycle. The top cable to the rear brake can be completely removed and set aside. Be sure to keep them and try not to kink them The lower ones will actually stay with the detachable cable guide. The springs and couplers around the cables will keep them together. Remove the rear stoker stem by removing this captain's seat post and sliding it off the captain's seat post. Put the captain's seat post back into the frame. Detach the rear cables from the middle of the frame. Pull the springs back and pull the housing out of the cable guides. Those rear pieces of housing and cable will stay with the rear part of the frame. We'll now start taking the rear end off of the stoker's position. Loosen the wishbone at the bottom. Loosen up the front of the captain's and stoker's position where they come together so that we can remove the timing chain and to decouple the frame from itself so that we can turn it into a single.
Remove the drive chain by pulling the derailleur forward and lifting the chain off the chain ring. Remove the timing chain by pushing the upper chain inwards and moving the crank forward and derailing the chain to the inside. Derail the rear as well and lift off. Using the camming tool, looks like a big black lo lollipop, insert the pin just forward of the top rear coupler into the hole and use the camming tool to force the frame apart by pushing against the lugs. That will get the frame far enough apart to allow the bike to be slid apart. Jiggle the bike up and down a little bit and the frame should come apart. Set the middle of the frame tubes aside. Set the front end of the bike aside. Now we'll remove the stoker's seat mast and bottom bracket from the rear triangle of the bicycle. There are two clamp bolts that attach the seat stays to the frame of the bicycle. Remove those two bolts completely along with the clamp. Keep them handy as we'll be using them shortly to attach the rear end to the front of the bike. Be sure that the frames loose and separate. Set the stoker seat mast and bottom bracket aside. And join the rear triangle to the captain's position. Slide the wishbone into the lower coupler until the upper clamp meets the seat tube. Reinstall the bolts and the clamp. Now tighten down the wishbone. Tighten down the clamp. Install the chain by pulling the derailleur forward and setting under the chain ring. Now attach the rear brake. and the gear cables. As within the other assembly, follow the cables back from the mechanisms they're actuating to be sure you have the correct cable attached to the correct mechanism.
attach the 3x7 as an assembly. Check that everything is tight. Remove rear seat post. Remove captain seat post and handlebars for stoker. Remove captain's seat post, remove stoker stem from the seat post. Remove the seat mast from the lower seat tube, both front and rear. Remove the pedals. Remember to remove the left pedals. Turn the wrench clockwise. To remove the right pedals, Remember to turn the wrench counterclockwise from where you stand in front of it. Disconnect the rear brake by pulling the V-brake calipers together and pulling the V-brake out of the yoke. Disconnect the middle cable couplers only. Disconnect the front V-brake. Loosen the frame tubes up and take the, remove the chain. Derail the drive chain and take the timing chain off. Set it aside. Remove the front wheel. You'll have to loosen the quick release up, up enough to get it around the wheel retainer on the front dropouts. Be sure the frame is completely loose before we disassemble. Loosen the removable cable guide. Loosen all the clamps. 
Use the camming tool again to separate the mainframe. By inserting the little pin in front of the rear coupler into the hole of the camming tool to get the frame started apart. Be sure that the rear brake cable is detached first. Shake the frame slightly and twisting slightly at the same time. Remove the stoker top tube and bottom tube. Loosen the handlebars. Your stem may look slightly different than this if you have uh, H bars or mountain bike bars. Loosen the stem collar. That's the lower bolt and it may have a quick release. Take the handlebars out and very carefully lay them on their sides and withdraw the stem. If you have difficulty removing the stem from the steer tube, use the headset wrench to push up against the top of the headset nut, pushing firmly against the stem clamp. Disconnect the 3x7 coupler from its pull chain. Loosen the rear wheel up and remove the rear wheel. Add packing material to each one of the parts. Large clear plastic tube and the seat tubes. Rear stoker stem goes into the bag. Notice we don't need to disassemble the rear stoker stem and handlebars quite as much as we would if we needed to put it into a single suitcase. Cover the main frame with a blue split tubing. Use the Velcro strips to secure the blue tubing to the frame. Cover the cranks with the crank covers. Lay the main frame into the bottom of the suitcase with the fork facing backwards and the handlebars laying out. Next, lay in the stoker stem. If you have flat bars, you may want to you may want to separate them. 
I'll put the captain's bars in. When packing into two suitcases, there's lots of extra room, so don't 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 be afraid if it's if it doesn't look exactly like this. More than likely, you'll end up with plenty of extra room. Insert the captain seat post and then the front wheel. Add the lower stoker's bottom tube, which is the connector tube, and the stoker's top tube, rear top tube. You can add a number of the smaller items. At this point, if you have clothing or other small items you'd like to add, it'd be, this would be a good time. There's quite a bit of extra room left over in here. Clothing and Ziploc bags works quite well if you want to conserve space or take fewer pieces of luggage. These are the seat masks, or the middle pieces of the seat tube. Be sure the cables are not going to get pinched as the suitcase closes by tucking them into the different into the corners of the suitcase so that they stay. The front of the suitcase then needs a crush protector. After you've gotten pretty much everything situated, situate the crush protector so that it sits close to the middle of the suitcase and be sure that it sits above all the other items in the suitcase. If you've got that crush protector above, everything should be packed well. It's important to note that there's extra room and you don't want pieces to actually jiggle around. Put something like the blanket in on top to be sure that the suitcase holds everything securely inside. Latch the suitcase down, making sure you don't pinch any of the cables. The suitcase should stretch just slightly as you close it. This is good and it keeps the bike from being jostled during shipment. Now insert the rear end, drailer up, all the way to the top right of the suitcase. Notice that the right crank is pointed towards the top of the suitcase. And insert the rear wheel into the rear of the bike. Add the stoker seat post. These are the biggest pieces of the bike and need to be placed first. Small swatch or cloth that can be used as a derailleur cover. Place the crush protector towards the center of the case. Add any extras that you might want to add at this point. There's lots of extra room. If you have a tra trailer, add the trailer pieces now. To pack the whole bike into a single suitcase, you'll need to remove the right cranks on both the front and the rear portions of the bicycle. To use the one key release, use the Allen wrench in your tool kit to turn the crank bolt counterclockwise. At first it'll seem a little bit loose and then it'll tighten up again. As it tightens up, continue to turn it counterclockwise until the crank is fully extracted off the bottom bracket. Put the rear end of the bike in just like as a single, as put in a double suitcase. 
add the top tube through the rear of the mainframe. This is the top, top tube of the rear of the bike and the, uh, on the bottom tube of the rear of the bike. That one goes underneath, just in front of the bottom bracket. Now add the rear wheel. Notice that the rear wheel has a protector over the cassette as it will run close to a couple of tubes and we don't want to scratch the tubing. Slide that into the rear triangle. Cover that up with a blanket. Add the crush protector. Notice that the crush protector and, and the blanket are situated so that the crush protector can push through. Add the little plastic round cap around the end of the bottom bracket. Now add the front of the bike. Notice that the brakes face back and the front of the frame sits in the lower left hand corner and the cassette and rear hub protrude up through the frame. They actually touch slightly so be sure that both pieces are well protected as the, if we have metal on metal it will actually scratch the frame. The crank goes up into the corner. Be careful to tuck extra cables and such into the corner of the suitcase so that they don't get pinched as the top closes. The saddles go in the corner there facing each other. Be sure to leave enough room to add the handlebars. Place the front wheel in. Add the crush protector. Be sure that the front wheel is lower than the top of the crush protector. Notice we've removed the quick release from the front wheel and there's a little gray hub cover to keep it from scratching the suitcase. Now add the captain's handlebars. If you have flat bars, they'll go along the sides. Both sets of bars fit very closely together. Now add the smaller pieces in to the crevices and small openings that are left over. These are the telesco telescoping sections of the seat posts. Front stem, st captain stem, Give up a push on the items to see actually what's going to happen when the suitcase shuts. It's important that it, if it doesn't, if it wants to wobble around a lot, you may have actually raised it as you as, added pieces to it. Put the cranks into the crank bags. There will not be much room left over when we get done.
Adding the final pieces, be sure that the cable guides are not in the way of the closing of the suitcase. And shut the suitcase. To pack the bike into a single suitcase, you'll need to remove the right cranks on the front portion of the bicycle. To use the one key release, use the Allen wrench in your tool kit to turn the crank bolt counterclockwise. At first, it'll seem a little bit loose and then it'll tighten up again. As it tightens up, continue to turn it counterclockwise until the crank is fully extracted off the bottom bracket. If you have questions about disassembling your Project Q to work as a single bike, go back to converting your Q to a single. Start by putting the rear end of the bike into the suitcase, very similar to packing as a single suitcase. Notice the stoker's seat post and bottom bracket are no longer part of the bike. Put the rear wheel in in the same manner as before, being sure to cover the cassette. Also note that the chain is pulled up over the front of the bike. This is important to not let the chain fall back into a clump. It can be very difficult to untangle. Pull the blanket around to protect as much of the bike as possible, yet leaving a gap for the crush protector to protrude through. If you've just used it as a tandem, be sure to remove the middle section of cables from the front of the bicycle. If you've been using it as a single bike, this step is not necessary. put the packaging back onto the bike before packing it into the suitcase. Remember that the fork faces backwards. Put the seat post in. This is the same spot that the seat post and seat went into as when you're packing as a single suitcase. Notice that the crank was pulled beforehand. Install the front wheel. Put the crush protector through the front wheel, being sure that the blanket's not in the way. The crush protector should go close to the middle of the suitcase, but don't let the flange sit over the top of the hub. In this instance, we've showed drop bars, which are the most difficult of the bars to pack. If you have a different type of bar, 
they'll go in a similar position. Pull all the last little pieces in. There's a little bit of extra room in here if you need to put extra stuff. Probably a set of cycling shoes uh, and some clothing if necessary. Be sure not to pinch the cables when you shut the suitcase. Slide the T-piece into the curved tongue. Slide the axle pieces into the pieces of the stacker. And at the same time, under the T of the tongue. Remove the plastic wing nuts. Take only one of the washers off. Leave one washer on each one of the bolts. Remove the wing nuts on the stacker unit. Remove the washer along with the wing nut. And identify where the three holes are going to go on the outside of the suitcase. Open the suitcase. Line those holes up with the suitcase looking through the bottom of the suitcase. And push the bolts through the holes. Notice that the framework now is a part of the suitcase. Open the suitcase, find the three bolts, add the washers, and add the wing nuts. Hand tighten. Next, add the stacker strap and the next suitcase. Find also the same set of holes. We're only going to use the back two this time. Put the bolts from the stacker unit through the two holes in the back of the suitcase.
Put the two washers and the two wing nuts on those bolts. And hand tighten. Now we'll put the wheels on. There are three pieces to the axle. An O-ring, a washer, and a cotter pin. Notice that one side of the trailer wheel, the bearing is recessed. That goes on first. Now add the O-ring, then the washer, and next the cotter pin through the hole. Repeat that on the other side. Now hook up the stacker strap, running the strap through the pull handle. Set the strap tension after snapping the, the buckle and then use the D-ring to lock down the strap. Now you can open the suit, both suitcases by swinging. You can open the top one first and get at that. If you desire to get in the bottom one, leave the top one shut and swing it back on the stacker unit and now the bottom one is accessible as well. Pull it forward to reattach and then snap the buckle. To attach it to the frame, use the air coupling, pull the collar back, slide it under the nipple, and push the collar forward. To remove, do the opposite. Pull the collar back and withdraw. If you find that one of the brake pads is up against the rim and then the movement in the brake is all occurring in just one side of the V-brake, make sure that the tension is correct when you pull on the brake lever, then adjust the V-brake using the spring tension adjustment. On most brakes, it's a small screw on the brake pivot that tensions the return spring on the brake. To tighten the spring and pull the pad away from the rim, turn the screw clockwise. To loosen the spring and have the brake pad advance towards the rim, turn it counterclockwise. Some VB brakes have wrench flats that turn the whole mechanism and are a little di different from these adjustment screws. The travel agent is used for drop bar brakes in conjunction with V-brakes. This pulls the cable a little farther than the brake levers are able to do on their own. When the brake has been disconnected and packed into the suitcase, it's possible for the cable to fall off the small pulley. If you assemble the bike with the cable off the small pulley and try to actuate the brake, it'll wedge the cable up into the pulley itself. Check this when assembling the bike. Loosen the brake cable up so you can open the V-brakes. Disconnect the V-brake at the rear to allow the tire to pass between the pads. Disconnect the coupler to the 3x7 hub if you have a 3x7 hub. And remove the wheel. If you have a 3x7 hub, loosen the nuts and run them out to the end of the axles.
disconnect the cable to the drum brake using the coupler just forward of the drum brake itself. Push down and away from you and the wheel will drop out of the dropouts. For installation, be sure that the rear derailleur cable is fully relaxed so that when you line up the chain with, with the small cog, the wheel is lined up with the dropouts. Be sure that the swing arm for the drum brake is actually in its horizontal slot. Also, if you have the 3x7, be sure the washers on the outsides and the tabs are actually following the axle up into the dropout. Tighten down the hub. And connect the 3x7. Connect the coupler to the drum brake and also connect the V-brake. Be sure you check both brakes before riding. We are we are rolling. Fine, this is for fine-tuning your uh, indexing system. Uh, particularly the new 9-speed is narrow and a little more particular. Relax the, the cable so that the derailleur is in the smallest cog or the highest gear. Make one click, pull the cable one click in your shifter, whatever type of shifter it is. And if it doesn't make the shift, turn the barrel adjuster counterclockwise until it makes the shift. And then go through the rest of the gears. If they hesitate, you can make small, small, fine adjustments, one quarter click at, or one quarter turn at a time, and it should go up and down the cogs very evenly. Okay. We're doing the three by seven, and this goes for almost any of the different types of shifters. Disconnect your shifter altogether using the little, little copper trigger here. Pull the cable as tight as it will go. If you have a twist shift, you still pull the cable. You're actually pulling the cable as far in as it can go to the highest click. Make sure that the cable runs straight. That means the little chain runs straight. What you're going to do is you're going to you're going to pull that ca that little chain out as far as it'll go and hook it up. Give the give the wheel a spin so that the gears mesh and pull this until it's, the, the chain is all the way out of the hub and that will actually set the shifting. Remember that when you're shifting you need to be, you need to be coasting. Rolling. If your bike is equipped with a roll -a jig this extra, uh, extra pulley that's put in the back and you've taking your bike out of the suitcase. This is a possible uh, problem that can occur when the cable becomes slack and that is the cable actually derails off the main pulley and it's a good thing to always just check it real quick before you assemble just in case because uh, if if you try to shift with it off that way it'll, the cable will actually wedge down inside so make sure that it actually runs down the middle of the pulley.